Hello, everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode. Wait, try this again. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Gathering More Leaves, where we answer the question, who is Harry Kellerman and why is he saying these terrible things about me? No, today, actually, the question we're going to be asking is, are you related to someone famous? Am I related to someone famous? Is anybody related to someone famous? We'll answer those questions and more in today's episode of Gathering More Leaves. Okay, so the other day I was contacted by a cousin of mine and she asked me if I was aware that we are related to Susan B. Anthony, the fourth cousin four times removed. Let me bring this up here and show you what I was alerted to. I was alerted to a, a website at, at familysearch.org which find out who we are related to. And I guess this at the time, there was uh, Roots Tech, I guess is an annual convention or, or something to that effect. It's held up there in Salt Lake City. And we could find out if we were related to people famous. And I'm logged in, I have an account at familysearch.org. So it's looking at my data and looking at other sets of data and determining that based on what it sees here that, for example, Susan B. Anthony is a fourth cousin four times removed, and then it shows Emily Dickinson, George Washington, Jane Austen, Marie Antoinette, and so forth and so on. There's about a dozen or more folks listed here. And so when I went in and I dug a little bit different, uh, dug a little bit deeper on this, I could click this button that says View Relationship, and uh, it takes me into this exciting message here. It says, Susan B. Anthony is my fourth cousin four times removed. And it shows that it's going through my father's line up to uh, a common ancestor by the name, or two common ancestors, by one William Anthony and uh, Mary Cockshell. So I recognize the name Cockshell right off the bat, and I realized that this is the daughter of uh, a man by the name of uh, John Cockshell, who was a uh, who I talked about in a previous episode when I did the uh, uh, on the Pickering family, and but he's not the headline story here today. Uh, it's the connection to uh, Susan B. Anthony, and there's a link here for viewing the few re full relationship, and. So I could see that this is going through, uh, I have to zoom in on it, navigate through this, uh, that it is going through Cordelia Pickering, who was the mother of my uh, great-grandmother, Della Gom Pickering, or Della Pickering Gom, I, I guess you should say. Uh, so Cordelia Pickering, um, I also discussed this in length in, in the previous uh, couple of ep episodes. So there's no need to go into that more deeply. But uh, I, I, I'm really confident about this particular line because I have been over it a number of times. So on the left side is, is my uh, branch going up to this common ancestor. And then on the right hand side, we see going down through uh, the ancestors of Susan B. Anthony. And I have no way of verifying verifying this uh, right off the bat, you know, just on, on the surface. But I, I'm going to assume that, that this, uh, what is on the um, right-hand side, the ancestry for Susan B. Anthony is correct. And I, I, like I said, I'm confident that this is correct on for, for Cordelia, for going through Cordelia Pickering. So as I went through this in, in more depth and I looked at the... Uh, uh, a lot of the, the ones that are listed here, um, I found two, two main things. One is uh, all of the ones on my father's side are going through uh, the Pickering branch. And most of the ones going through my mother's, with the exception of, of, of two that I found, um, are going through uh, my maternal grandfather's side. So, so in other words, my, my mother's father's side of the family. 
And when I looked at some of them, for example, uh, if I looked at, uh, let's see, who's in here? I, I believe Judy Garland is in here, right? So let's take a look at Judy Garland. And this is uh, going through my mother's side of the family. And it says here that Judy Garland is my 11th cousin once removed. And I thought, oh, this is exciting. And my father um, was a huge fan of, of Judy Garland. And, uh, and I thought, okay, let's take a look at this one. And we'll have to zoom in on it. And so this is going through, uh, like I said, my uh, maternal uh, grandfather's side, and then up through his uh, his grandmother, Martha Josephine Prothero. So this is going through the Prothero line. So we get up here to Evan Rothrock property. I don't know where they've come up with this Rothrock. I mean that. Um, they claim that his his mother's name was was Rothrock. We won't get into that. Uh, but this is going through a connection that is controversial and in question. So it gets up here through John E. Prothrow, uh, which was uh, the uh, grandfather, supposedly the grandfather of Evan Prothrow, who I've referred to in the past as Evan the Patriot, as opposed to uh, this Ev Evan. James, I don't know where they're getting the, the middle name James uh, in here, uh, but it goes through this this Evan Price Ridge, and so right off the bat, I got okay. Well, this doesn't this doesn't look right. This is this is controversial. This is questionable. So I'm not sure that this um, that this connection to Judy Garland is correct. Now, now, well, let's note here that it's showing a connection uh, that my mother is showing a connection through my mother's branch over to Judy Garland. Now, put a pin in that because uh, Judy Garland will come up a little bit later here in a moment. Uh, so let's go back to where we started from. Whoops, move on again. To uh, familysearch.org. So I was curious as to uh, how they were doing this. And uh, so I did some more research or a little, dug a little bit deeper, actually. And I found a blog post, and the blog post took me to another uh, uh, link regarding uh, famous relatives, and this was even more people on here. So I think there's a total of uh, 60, uh, 65 people are listed here. And so I can't tell on the surface whether this is a connection on my mother's side or a connection on my uh, father's side. So we have, for example, John Adams, John James K. Paul, John Quincy Thomas, Jefferson, Franklin Pierce. These are all uh, presidents here in the beginning. There's even Marie Antoinette. And Marie Antoinette was also listed on that other side. And this is another uh, problem area. Uh, so this is a Marie Antoinette supposedly uh, a connection on my mother's side, but I, I, I found a, an error in that. I don't know if it shows up in this one here, but uh, yeah, so uh, it shows it going through, again, my uh, maternal grandfather, his father, his grandfather, his great-grandmother, would that be his great-great-grandmother, great, his great-grandmother, Elizabeth McMullen, wife of David Dobbs. And it shows here that she's the daughter of John McMullen and Elizabeth Stowers. That's <laughs> that's a mistake. She was a, a granddaughter of John McMullen and I believe, uh, um, I'm sorry, I can't remember her name, Beasley. Uh, Elizabeth Stowers was her, this is her father, Patrick, McMullen. I don't know where they're getting the middle name Joseph, uh, but uh, this is all mixed up because uh, Patrick Joseph, Patrick, I'm sorry, Patrick McMullen, Elizabeth McMullen's father, had a second wife, Elizabeth Stowers, after Elizabeth McMullen's mother uh, passed away. He remarried a, a woman by the name of Elizabeth Stowers. So this is this is all mixed up. So this is all in question here. I'm not even sure how to. Um, how to straighten this out. So uh, this is just another example of some of the mistakes 
that I found. I, I'm going to show you one more uh, just to give you an idea of how how obvious some of these mistakes are. And that is uh, through uh, another one of these. Let's see if I can uh, find it here. Uh, maybe Franklin Pierce. Uh, let's see how this is going here. This one, this one actually could be correct. And, and in fact, this is an example of one on my mother's side uh, that I I believe is correct. So it's showing uh, Nathaniel Prothero uh, and his, his mother's name was Elizabeth Ann Morgan. And then it takes us up to this, uh, this Morgan family to William Morgan and then down through Miles Morgan, Lydia Morgan, to the uh, Pierce family and to Franklin Pierce. So the reason why I'm showing you that one is because um, there's, as I discovered, there is also a connection to my father, but that does not mean that my parents were related as cousins. It just means that they shared a relationship uh, to a person through these different branches, but they don't share a, a common ancestor. In other words, we're going back through one of multiple ancestors that she shared with, uh, I'm sorry, one of multiple ancestors that Franklin Pierce uh, had. We all have, you know, many, uh, many ancestors. Let's see, where was I going to next? Um, so, yeah, I wanted to give you a, a, one more example here of a, of a mistake. And let's see, I'm trying to think where that would have been through. Uh, let's, let's see. Uh, I'll go over here and I can find it if I look. Yeah, so, so what I did was, uh, I didn't go through all 65, but I did go through 45 out of the ones that I saw on this, uh, on that second page. And I put them into a spreadsheet and I marked down where these links were going through. And I, I noticed that, that there was a pattern in this and that the pattern was, is that, for example, like I said, all of the ones through my father's side were going through the Pickering line. The majority of them were going through a line such as uh, through the Chase, through Abigail Chase, through an ancestor of Cordelia. Uh, on my mother's side, uh, I noted that we had here uh, McMullen to Sinclair. Um, I don't, I don't have this in red, so I, I, I think these are correct. They appear to be correct, but I here's a number of them that were obviously, and I marked it Parks to Park. So if we look at Franklin Roosevelt or or Shirley Temple, let's take a look at Shirley Temple. Okay, so I believe that she shows up on this page here. Queen Victoria could be one that I could look at, uh, Judy Garland. Okay, let's take a look at Shirley Temple here. And it says, Shirley Temple is my 11th cousin. It's going through a side on my, uh, um, it's going through my mother's side of the family. And I go in and I look at the uh, full relationship. And again, this is going through the, through Dobbs line. Uh, it goes up through David Dobbs to a Susanna, Louisiana Parks. Now, when I first learned about my uh, father's, my father's, my maternal grandfather's ancestry, which was only about 25 years ago that I first learned about this, it, it got up to his ancestor through his uh, great-grandfather, uh, great-great-grandfather, I believe, great, yeah, his great-grandfather, David Dobbs, Elizabeth McMullen, Josiah Dobbs was shown as being married to a woman whom we only knew her last name. And it was spelled, and I'm gonna put this on the screen, Louis, Louisiana, which some people inter interpreted to be Louisiana. That, that may have been her first name. And others said that they were looking at the stylized, the L, was a, actually a stylized S, and that her name was actually Susanna. It wasn't Luciana or it wasn't Louisiana. That was all we knew. And, and the documentation was, uh, her name appeared in uh, Josiah Dobbs' uh, will when he died in 1810. And then when the 1820 census was taken, her name appears in there 
as Luis, Lucianne. And again, I'm gonna put that on the screen so you see how it's spelled. So where did this Parks come from? And then you'll notice that it shows that Susanna Louisiana Parks, with it spelled with an, uh, an S at the end, is the daughter of Amariah Park. Not Parks, but Park. So where where did that where did that come from? And so if we if we dig in on this, we see some some interesting things here. It's not only that the, the names are different. Uh, there there really isn't any kind of um, sourcing for this. Uh, there's the 1820 census, as I mentioned, and then there's uh, her, uh, her grave. But if we go into the details for this, uh, and we look down here, we see, okay, so she's supposedly connected to him, and that he uh, remarried uh, a woman named Bingham. Uh, I'm sorry, that, oh, yeah, so Bingham is supposedly the mother of, of uh, Susanna, Su uh, Susanna, Louisiana Park. And again, where is the sourcing for this? If we go in and we, uh, we look at this Amariah Park, uh, and I don't, you know, I don't want to get too uh, deep in the weeds on this, but um, it shows that they were, or they're living up in, in Massachusetts uh, in the 1730s, uh, and that uh, he died, and it says in the Republic of Vermont. I, I don't know where where any of this is coming from, uh, but. If we look at uh, the daughter here, okay, where? It, it says that she's born in, in Massachusetts, and there was a source attached to this. There are two sources shown here for Louisiana Parks, and it says, uh, as I mentioned, the census for 1820. But if we look here at this, find a grave, which, you know, the, the grave site, of course, would, would tell us information if we could see a, a tombstone or a gravestone. But unfortunately, there is no, there is no photograph of a gravestone, so we don't know what information there might be, if, if there is one where it is. But it says that uh, she was born in the 20th, she was born on the 20th of May, uh, 1760, and that she died 29 January, 1845. We can, it says here, there's a link here, we can look at the original document. It's going to take us out to findagrave.com. So let's go there. And what does this tell us? It tells us that she was born May the 20th, 1760, Wayne County, Illinois. So this woman who is supposedly the daughter of a man and woman who lived up in the Massachusetts Bay Colony, that they, I guess, took a trip to Illinois. Illinois wasn't a, a state in 1760. I don't think it became a state until the 18 teens. And it was part of the, the Northwest Territory, but I, but in the pre-Revolutionary War, I think it was in 1760 was the French and Indian War had ended. So it became part of, the, of a British colony but I don't think it was referred to as Illinois. So in other words, you know, I don't want to belabor the point here, but it's a mistake and it's a very obvious mistake. So this, anything that's uh, this parks park line, as far as I'm concerned, is in question. So, uh, and that accounts for, I can't remember how many we said, but about a dozen, I would think that are in here. If we go over here, we're looking at, I think less than a, a third of these. There's also another line here that goes through, uh, for example, on an Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so that's a good place to, to jump off here. That uh, there was, uh, from further looking, I came across uh, this tool noted as a third party tool called a Relative Finder 2.0, and it, uh, it says here it's a family search compatible solution. So what it's doing is it's using an API provided by Family Search to, uh, to pull this information and to build uh, an even larger database here. So if I go in here, I'm logged in, and I'm 
and I logged in. It has me log into also log into FamilySearch.org, and then it pulls this information down based on on my identity, and it's telling me that it's finding 552 uh, uh, relatives, famous relatives. And you'll notice on some of these, they fall into the category of LDS prophets, wives. I guess they were wives of uh, of Joseph Smith. So I, I think I counted about uh, a couple of hundred of of these that fall into either uh, the LDS uh, prophets or prophets' wives. So there's roughly about. Uh, I, I, I would say 200, but I think it's more like 125 or so. Uh, so there's about 450 um, so that are belong to other groups, like folks that were who were signers of the Declaration of Independence, or just listed as famous uh, Americans. For example, here's that John Coxall who I mentioned earlier, and it's saying that through this John Coxall that I'm related to Benedict Arnold. Okay, so that's that's one that uh, that's easy. Uh, but let's take for example, here's uh, John H Henry Holiday. I believe is is the famous uh, or infamous uh, Doc Holiday, and uh, that's saying that I'm related to Doc Holiday through uh, Evan Rothrock Prothrow. I don't know where where it's getting Rothrock from, but it, his name is Evan Prothrow. Uh, in all historical documents. Uh, so let's take a look at that one. And, uh, okay, so it's it's saying that uh, he's he's an ans his ancestor, or we have this common ancestor is Evan Prothrow and Elizabeth Morgan. Uh, and his ancestor is Catherine Connell. Okay, uh, that's a kind of a red light uh, red flag there because where where is Catherine Connell coming from? If she's a daughter of Evan Prothrow, why is she not called Catherine Prothrow? Uh, and we're going to find out that there's even there's even more problems on this because if we're going down this uh, right hand side, going down towards uh, Doc Holliday, uh, we see that. We've got here William Nettles, who we don't, they don't know his birth date, that he died in 1806. Uh, his child uh, was born in 7, 1744 and died in 1820. Okay, so there's that, we're good there. Uh, Mary Nettles was born in 1785 and died in 1852. Jane Cloud was born in 1804. If you look closely, you can see it here. We have here this George Nettles. Born in 1780, died in 1850. How can how could this be? How can George Nettles, born in 1780, be an ancestor of Zachary Nettles, born in 1744? So those are the kind of things that you have to look out for and trying to figure out: is this correct? Because there there's there's obviously some sort of an, an error here with that. So at a uh, a kind of a cool feature that this relative finder has is that I can I can switch this so that instead of it looking uh, at me, that it would look at my father or look at my mother. And the way that I do that is if I go into uh, FamilySearch.org and I'll open up this in another. Uh, let's see here. So if I'm looking at my tree. You'll notice here that it's got IDs under my parents. So I can copy, if I click on this, uh, if I just click on it, oops, it'll copy the ID to the clipboard and the same thing for my mother. So if I go back into this uh, relative uh, finder at relativefinder.org and I go under uh, this tab that says connect and I can see I've got an option here to see your relationship with a deceased person. I can put in somebody else's ID and it would uh, map out my relationship to that person. Uh, I can see a relationship between two deceased people. So I could put in, uh, I could put in my parent, put my parents' IDs, my mother and my father on either side, and it would show that relationship. 
if there was something other than just the marriage relationship. Uh, I can see my relationship with people nearby and I guess it's looking out at, it's doing some kind of looking at where people are logged in and, um, and, and seeing if there's a relationship there between uh, others that are quote unquote nearby. Uh, and then see relationships as if you were a different person. So that's the one we want. We want to um, we want to switch this, and we want to plug in this other ID here. I think this was the one I copied from my father, and we submit that. And so now, instead of uh, instead of my relationship with these people, it's showing my father's relationship. Now you'll notice something interesting here. It says 551 which is the same thing that it showed for me. So uh, that tells me right off the bat that there must be some kind of overlap between you know, my mother's side and my father's side. So if I, if I were to put in my, uh, my mother's uh, ID in here, uh, or actually click it and copy it, we'll see what we, what we get from that. And we go down and we look at the bottom line, there's 596. So there's definitely some overlap here. Now, uh, another feature is, uh, there's more options here. If I click on that, it says generate TSV. TSV means tab separated value. So what it's gonna give you is uh, a table, essentially in a text file, and each column of that table is gonna be separated by tabs. Uh, common way of doing this is comma separated values, but that doesn't really work when we're dealing with names and things like that because there could be commas embedded in there and you have to do all sorts of different formatting to get that. It's just simpler to uh, separate the columns with tabs. And then you can take that and you can bring it into uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So that's what I did. And I did that for my mother and my father, and it gave me this nice table. There's no links in the table, so you have to uh, you have to you find what you're looking for here, and then you you need to go back to. But it, it broke it down into um, the name of the relative, um, and I added this column here for parent, uh, a relationship uh, describing the relationship uh, to this common uh, to this person and then who the common ancestor is, and then they, they've grouped them by different categories like sport, movie stars, sports figures, entertainers, etc. cetera. And uh, so this allowed me by adding a column in here for parent, I did the same thing for my father. I pulled that down and that allowed me to bring it into a table where I combined the information here, but, I'm, but it's still separated by father versus mother, and I used some coloring uh, to uh, make it easier to see that. So the ones that are in uh, this kind of, uh, we'll call it red, I don't know what you, uh, salmon color, colored here, um, we can see um, that he's a, a uh, that Donnie Osmond, uh, and, and I think his sister Marie is listed in here also, Donnie Osmond, is a, a tenth cousin and that common ancestor we can see is adrian porter so this allowed us to be able to see uh the how many of these different common ancestors had uh, uh descendants who just turned out to be uh you know famous uh folks uh and and that they are related uh to me and my parents in some way uh, so what this allowed me to do was to, to see if there was anyone in here such as Judy Garland. And here, I'm going to get to this in a moment, but I'll show you just another example of this. If we were to, uh, let me sort this by, <clears throat> by name here, excuse me. And uh, I think the first one that I had observed this in, excuse me, just a moment. I think the first one I noticed this in was um, Franklin Pierce. So if we go and we look at Franklin Pierce. So President Franklin Pierce will see that I have a relationship with Franklin Pierce on both my parents' side, but there's a different common ancestor. Now, you know, this may or may not be correct, but at least that it, it's documented this way. 
uh, is saying that on my father's side, he was the sixth cousin four times removed through an ancestor named Adrian Porter. And then on my mother's side, that he was a 12th cousin two times removed uh, through a uh, David uh, Mellon op Hyrule. And like I said, I don't, I don't know, I don't think that's that's correct. I, I'm questioning that, but it, it the the, doc, the point is that the documentation is saying that they had relationship, they had a relationship with this distant cousin, but they don't share a common ancestor. So that doesn't mean that they are related. You could be related to someone and your spouse could be related to that person, but it's going through a different uh, uh, pathway. That doesn't mean that, that the two of you are related. But if you do share, if the three of you do share a common ancestor, that does mean that you're related. And so if we go back here, oh, I'm sorry, it was going down the wrong way. Uh, if I go to, uh, let me sort this by, by common ancestor. And um, I've highlighted it in bold, so I should be able to see it here. Um, actually, the name of the person is David Stone. And we could see here that and there's a lot of different relationships to David Stone, Chester A. Arthur. Uh, oh, this one, I like that in bold, bold, and bold. So what this is saying is that my parents are related, and Judy Garland is a good example here, but I've already shown you that there's a problem with uh, getting back from my mother back to this David Stone. So if we were looking at this from the perspective of my father here, and if I go back to a uh, relative finder, and uh, let me make sure I've got my father's ID located, loaded in there. And uh, if I say, we have my father's, bit, and we'll start it by our relatives, and we'll get over there to where Judy Garland would be. And we look at, um, Judy Garland. So from my father, how do we get to uh, David Stone? We get to David Stone going through uh, Abigail Chase to Amy Anthony to William Anthony. This, this is the same line that uh, we got to uh, Susan B. Anthony. Uh, this Anthony line uh, is, is how we're related to, to Susan Anthony, but we're going back even further back to this David Stone who lived in the 1400s, according to this. Um, and so that is, uh, that's going way back. That's 11th cousin, three times removed. And we're going down on the uh, Garland, Judy Garland side of the family, on the right-hand side. I have no way of knowing whether this is correct. I'd have to, you know, we'd have to, to look at it, um, but on the surface, at least on my father's side, on the left-hand side, this does appear to be correct. So now if we go back and we look at my mother's side here, we copy this in uh, and uh, we change the way that we're looking at things. And we sort by relative and we're looking for Judy Garland. And it's saying that uh, on my mother's side, she's also 11th cousin. Uh, two times removed. So how do we get there? We're getting there. We're going through this uh, Mahitable Ludlow, uh, supposedly a daughter of Zebuline Webb. Well, that's a, a red flag there. Her last name is this is Ludlow. So how, is she a daughter of the Zebuline Webb? And if we go in and we look at uh, Zebulon web just lots of sources there's 22 sources here uh it's saying that he he was born in massachusetts uh, it looks like he died in connecticut and uh he's uh married to a, a judith howard and he has all these children last name is webb mary webb zebulon webb going down abigail webb sarah webb mahitable ludlow why <laughs> why does she have a different last name uh, than all these other children and and where's you know 
where does the source, where is the sourcing for, for this? We go and look at her. It says that she's born in South Carolina, right? So let's look at her sister. Where was her sister born? Connecticut, died in Virginia. Is this a sister or, or a brother? Uh, it doesn't matter. He is born in Connecticut. So how, how did she come to be born in South Carolina? Um, she appears to be the only one it was born in South Carolina. I'd have to go through and look at some of these, but as you can see, so far the ones that I've looked at are either born in, in uh, they're all born in Connecticut, so some of them later dying in Virginia or New York, but I don't know, this, this connection here uh, is very sketchy. And if we're looking at her, there are zero sources for her. Um, so these are, these are just some of the things we have to look out for. Uh, I think this is, that's the only one uh, that I found where there's potential uh, for, for my parents having been, having relationship uh, other than through marriage, going back as, as cousins, is going, all going through this um, stone. There's another uh, stone in here, a Simon stone. But if we go back over here to this, or let's see, where were we looking? Here's the Simon Stone is a son of uh, David Stone. So it's, it's, it's it, the same thing applies. Uh, there are, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything that's, uh, I think the, the, other, the other point that I, I, I point, the other thing that I pointed out earlier, and I'll repeat this, is that um, there are, uh, there's really, you know, there's 500 something here, but there's really not that many uh, different common ancestors. They, they, there's, um, as you can see, there's, for example, going through for uh, Orville Wright, uh, Dr. Samuel Mudd, I think he was the guy that treated um, uh, John Wilkes Booth, Thomas Hayward uh, was a, a signer of the declaration. Wilbur Wright, the brother, they're all going through Andrew Ken uh, Carrington. Uh, we've got Bill Crosby, Joseph Smith, uh, going through Ann Boomer and a couple of other ones. Um, and so the, here's uh, several going through a uh, guy by the name of Edmund Scott. And so this, by putting it in a table like this, it allows you to, to to, to sort through all of these uh, in, a, in a much, uh, you know, eliminating ones that you say, oh, these can't be right, these must be a mistake. Um, so for example, I question the relationship to uh, Richard Nixon and uh, the astronaut uh, Scott Carpenter, because it's saying it's going through this uh, Evan Prythrich, which I think was a connection that had been noted many many years ago but was later um, debunked and uh, wow there's a whole bunch here going through supposedly going through this George Neville uh, I can see Lewis Carroll um, Ernest Hemingway so, so there's a lot of a lot of interesting things to uh, to sort through and and to to uh, determine whether uh, they're mistaken or not um, so anyway, uh, make sure that all the links are up, up here that you can uh, find these and uh, hopefully um, you'll have some fun with it like, like I have. Okay, well, I see by the old clock on the wall that we're all out of time. And so that's it for this episode of Gathering Morley's. If you enjoyed watching it, be sure to hit the like button down below and hopefully you'll have the a chance to uh, subscribe by clicking the subscribe button. So bye for now.